good day and welcome to class time, your daily classroom for CSEC students. I'm Vanessa Francis, your CSEC English teacher for today, and I'll be guiding you through today's lesson. Let's get started. So today, we are looking at more reading comprehension with a focus on the persuasive writing items. And these take many different forms and we'll try and get as many of them done today as possible. All right? So of course, our lesson objectives. So you'll be able to discuss the different approaches to answering multiple choice items. Of course, you'll have to analyze and read some comprehension items. And lastly, you'll select responses to reading comprehension questions. All right, let's begin. So we're just refreshing these strategies. Each time we have to remind you, these are the strategies that you can use to help you. The obvious thing you must do, you have to read the passage more than once. Well, the item, sometimes it's a passage. In this case, you might get some advertisements. So you need to read through more than once to get a full understanding of what it's saying. Of course, you need to read each question as well and read them carefully. Don't overlook anything, don't skip anything. So you need to understand not just the item you're given to respond to, but you have to also understand the questions. Of course, try and think of an answer before you look at the options that you're given. So if you have an idea in your mind, then you might just look for the option that's closest to that and it will help you not to be distracted by the distractors. And of course, if you don't know an answer, it is fine. Look at the options and try and eliminate them and see which one looks most likely to be the answer. And naturally, you're working with a time limit. So if you come across a question that is giving you a warm time, skip it, move on, but please remember to return to it afterwards. So put a little symbol next to it so that you are aware that you're not supposed to fill in that slot with the next answer and that you're supposed to come back to it when you have finished the paper or that section. So our first piece that we're going to look at is National Youth Symposium 2017. All right, so this one is actually a more graphical item. So look at that. So you're not getting really anything to read in prose form. You have a table. So look at the different sections on the table. So we have the heading, National Youth Symposium 2017, topic, adolescent health, the challenges, Obana Conference Center, Sunday, August 6th, sorry, Sunday, 6th of August, 2017. Then coming down, you look at sponsors, and there's a list of sponsors, Ministry of Youth, Ministry of Education, National Council on Drug Abuse, Conference of Churches, the University Christian Council, the Muslim Youth Association, Hindu Youth Council. Next to that, who should attend? Interested members of the public, members of youth groups, healthcare professionals, students in medical sciences, media personnel. Next to that, how to attend. Contact Yvonne Dalton at Ministry of Youth, and you have a telephone number, for registration forms and other information. Complete the registration form and return it to the Ministry of Youth. We are moving down the paper now sessions led by experts in their fields. And of course, here are the sessions. So HIV AIDS, Dr. L. Basinda, Basinda. Teenage pregnancy, Professor Nancy Sewell. Other sexually transmitted diseases, Dr. C. Smith-Brown. Alcohol and other legal drugs, Major Leonard Akansa. <laughs> Human sexuality, Reverend Samantha Bin. Healthy food, Dr. Prakash Ramat. Now go to the far left, testimonials from Young Entrepreneur of the Year, a recovering cocaine user, a contestant in the Miss World competition. Go across to the far right, entertainment by Festival's Young Band of the Year, Kawalo. And at the very bottom now, from left to right, Feature address by Most Conscious Youth of the Year, Bukawela Tudor. Next to that, 
athletes and performance enhancing drug, Bragna Dita, prostitution, Cantona Bennett. And the last thing there, deadline for submission of forms, 15th of July, 2017. So notice it's quite a lot of information to absorb. But what makes it easier to do is the fact that it is arranged in various boxes. So once you can remember what the different boxes have, then you can just simply go there rather than have to read through a paragraph of prose. So now let's look at the possible questions you might see. So according to the information provided, the main theme of the symposium is what? So what can you remember? Was it youth? Was it drug abuse? Was it adolescent health or was it sexually transmitted diseases? It was in that very first box that we looked at. So if you remember correctly, it was adolescent health. It says so. Topic, adolescent health, the challenges. All right, let's look at the next one. Which of the following groups is not a sponsor of the symposium? And they made sure to put that in all caps so you wouldn't get it confused. Which of these four options was not listed among the sponsors? Ministry of Youth, Ministry of Health, Conference of Churches, or the National Council on Drug Abuse? Do you remember which one wasn't there? You should. And it's quite ironic too, and this is why it doesn't pay to guess. Because if you guessed, you would never have guessed that the Ministry of Health was not a sponsor in such a case as this. So you really had to make sure you read, because you would by default say, it is about adolescent health, so of course the Ministry of Health is involved, but they were not. So you have to be careful. That's why you need to read the prompts you're given. All right, let's go to our next question. Which of the following words can best replace symposium in the advertisement? So based on what you learned about the symposium, would exhibition, conference, discussion, or conversation be the best word to replace it? Think carefully. Symposium. And the best word to replace symposium would indeed be conference. Very good. Now let's look at the next one. How can those who want to participate register for the event? You were given registration details. So what were you supposed to do? Call the ministry and speak to Yvonne Dalton. Contact Yvonne Dalton and call the Ministry of Education. Telephone the Ministry of Youth and the Ministry of Education or complete a registration form and return it to the Ministry of Health. So which of those four options were you given? What was the instruction for those of you who would have been interested in attending? Now remember, you know, there are usually two answers that are close, but something about one of them will eliminate it. So you were told a particular name, but did she work at the Ministry of Youth or did she work at the Ministry of Education? So you were supposed to call the Ministry of Youth and speak to Yvonne Dalton. And after that, you'd get further details. All right, our next question. All of the following groups are specifically invited to attend except who? So some groups were listed among those that were being particularly invited to attend. So look at this list, who wasn't on it? So youth groups, members of the public, parents and young people, or doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers? This is another question where you definitely had to read because if you didn't, then you might not pick the right answer because the answer, unfortunately, is not something you would have guessed because you would assume it's a health symposium for young people. So parents and young people would have been among the list of invited guests, wouldn't there? But if you look back, they're not. Who should attend? Interested members of the public, members of youth groups, healthcare professionals, students in medical sciences, media personnel. Those were the people listed, not parents, not young people, interestingly enough.
So I hope you're understanding the importance of having to actually read the prompts you're given. All right, so let's look at the next one now. Caribbean Miles. All right, so this one is another ad. Join our Caribbean Miles program. You can earn Caribbean airline miles every flight. Plus, when you fly, drive, or shop, you will earn miles even faster. Our membership. Members who fly 20,000 miles on Caribbean airlines within a calendar year are eligible for silver membership. Flying 40,000 miles qualifies members for gold membership, while flying 80,000 miles qualifies for an executive gold membership. So let's look at the silver tier membership. Unique members credentials, a 3,000 miles bonus upon attainment of silver tier status, preferential check-in and priority boarding on all Caribbean Airlines flights, waiver of date change penalty and redeposit fee on reward tickets. So that's for the silver. Now let's look at the gold tier membership perks. Unique members credentials, a 5,000 miles bonus upon attainment of gold tier status, preferential check-in and priority boarding on all Caribbean Airlines flights, waiver of date change penalty and redeposit fee on reward tickets and lastly expedited award delivery at no cost now let's look at the table so it's arranged in three columns destination awards and the miles needed so let's move across so the first destination within the caribbean or between south america and the caribbean the awards one-way upgrade one-way economic class, one-way business class. And the miles you need for the one-way upgrade, 5,000. For the one-way economic class, 7,500. And for the one-way business class, 12,000. Now the next destination between the Caribbean, South America, and North America. The awards, one-way upgrade, and you'd need 10,000 miles. One-way economic class, 15,500 miles needed. One-way business class, 25,500 miles needed. And then the next destination between Kingston and North America. The awards now for the one-way economy class, you would need 16,250 miles. And for the one-way business class, you would need 28,750 miles. And at the bottom there, they specify what they re refer to as South America. So it's Caracas, Georgetown, and Paramibo. And you're told, thank you for flying with Caribbean Airlines. And you're given the website to visit and the email address to contact. All right. So absorb all of that. And we will look at the questions. First question, what does the airline promise if a person joins the MILES program? So what are you promised if you join this program? Faster travel, free shopping, frequent shopping, or rewards for every flight. What are the benefits of joining this program? You should know because it was stated very early on. So the rewards are rewards for every flight. So you don't get necessarily faster travel, free shopping or frequent shopping, but you do get rewarded when you take flights. All right. Next question. How many bonus miles does a silver tier member receive? What did it say on the paper? How many bonus miles? 3,000, 5,000, 7,000 or 8,000 silver tier membership it's right there so you didn't have to search very hard to find 3,000 it's right there under the list of membership rewards so let's move on to the next question to which of the following destinations can a person fly using 25,500 airline miles so once you have accumulated that number of miles where can you go? Can you go to Asia? Can you go to Africa? Can you go to Europe? Or can you go to North America? 
Now, do you remember that table? The table listed out everything. So for 25,500 miles, so you just look for that quickly. Where can you go? Didn't ask you how you can get there. Where can you go? And of course, by now you can see that. You can go to North America. It's the only option you're given that matches up with the options on the actual question paper. Let's go on. So according to the advertisement, what should a prospective member do if more detailed information is needed about the benefits of the program? So what should you do if you want a little more information, you weren't quite satisfied? So do you fly frequently? Do you visit the airline's webpage? Do you visit the airline offices? Or do you join the MILES program? What's the obvious thing you're supposed to do? Now, if you hadn't read it, there are two possibilities there. And this is why, again, it's important to read it. Because the two possibilities would be to visit the web page or to visit the offices. However, you are given specific instructions on the paper. And those instructions said what? Can you see them? Yes, you can. So tell me what they are. Yes, you're supposed to visit the airline's web page, not the offices. So you're directed to the web page. Next question. Which techniques does the advertisement use to appeal to travelers to join the MILES program? Remember, you know, it's persuasive. So what did they do? We looked at a ton of techniques in the past few classes. So did they use facts? Did they use opinions? Did they use persuasive language? Or did they use personal experience? So were there any testimonials given? That would be personal experience. Did they use persuasive language, your similes, your metaphors, that sort of language? Did they give opinions? Remember now, an opinion is just basically the way you feel about something. It can't be verified by anyone else because opinions change from individual to individual. So there's no standard measurement for an opinion. Did they use facts? A fax is verifiable. If I say there are 10 pencils, you can go and count that there are 10 pencils. Everyone who can count from one to 10 will know that there are 10 pencils, as opposed to me saying there are few pencils. 10 pencils to me would be a few. 10 pencils to someone else might be a lot. So that is the difference between having a fact and having an opinion. Now, which of these four were used? Which one was used in the advertisement? You should know this. Yes, you know this. They used facts. So they gave you a lot of details. They told you the rewards. They told you how to achieve the rewards and what you needed to do after you got them. Our next question, the main purpose, and notice the word is in caps, the main purpose of the advertisement is to encourage persons to do what? Hmm, why did they put this ad together? What was the meaning behind it? What was the whole idea behind it? Was it to get persons to enjoy air travel? Was it to get persons to receive an executive gold card? Was it to encourage persons to fly more often? Or was it to encourage persons to become members of the MILES program? Now notice main. So several of these things could have been achieved through the ad. However, you are focusing on what was the main thing that they wanted. So if you are going to narrow it down, you have two possibilities. To get people to fly more often or to get people to become members of the program. Now, would they want you to just fly more often with any airline? Or would they want you to fly more often to become members of the program? Very good. So let's look at Bermuda. All right, so for Bermuda. Bermuda. Before you, blue water all the way to Morocco. Behind you, every care you ever had. Bermuda is the different island. It basks here in mid-ocean, remote, apart, unlike any other place. What little island do you know with 
dazzling white roofs to catch the rain, with pastel houses cut from coral rocks set in tropical green. Only Bermuda. What other island is ringed with such different beaches, some wide and smooth, others with tiny coves hidden in cliffs, waiting just for you? What other island can you roam on foot, by ferry, motorbike, or carriage, stopping for a wayside picnic, or to explore a vast cavern underground? Only Bermuda. Only one island of 21 square miles has 21 golf courses. Only one faraway island lets you skin dive in an ancient Spanish shipwrecks or snorkel on a coral reef. Fish for wahoo, Alison tuna, or the wily bonefish, or dine on rockfish, chowder, and syllabub. Then dance the night away with the limbo, calypso, or whichever. Bermuda, far away, long ago, old world, and 90 jet minutes from New York. Children love Bermuda and vice versa. Bring the family. Ask your travel agent in the USA or Canada or write Bermuda. 610 5th Avenue, New York, 10020, number 6, Michigan Avenue, Chicago, 60602. So where were they encouraging you to go again? Jamaica? <laughs> no, to Bermuda. All right, so let's look at our first question. The use of the phrases Bermuda, far away, long ago, old world in line 22 in this advertisement attempts to create the impression that Bermuda is what? Is it somewhat backward in spite of its beauty? The impression that it has remained unchanged and unspoilt by technology? The impression that it is difficult to get to because it lies way out in mid-ocean, not to be confused with the Bermuda Triangle? Or the impression that it is very it is a very distant place inhabited by people of an ancient civilization. So based on the ad, what were these words encouraging you to see or do? Have an idea yet? Far away, long ago, old world. Don't be distracted by a particular answer there because it is to show that Bermuda has remained unchanged and unspoilt by technology. So despite the advent of technology, it still has that old world charm. All right, let's go on. Which of the following statements is an opinion rather than a fact? We discussed this not too long ago. So remember, opinions will vary from person to person. There is no standard to measure it against. Whereas a fact is a fact. You can check a fact. So which of these four is an opinion? Bermuda boasts as many golf courses as its area. Bermuda is surrounded by different types of beaches. There is a variety of means of transport offered on the island. The architectural structure of Bermuda houses is attractive. Which of those can't you check per se? It will vary from person to person. One should stand out more than the rest, and that one should be. The architectural structure of Bermudan houses is attractive. What is attractive to you might not be attractive to someone else. So our next question is, from reading the advertisement, one can draw all of the following conclusions about Bermuda except. So three of these things are correct, but one of them is not. So what conclu conclusion can you draw? First one, Bermudans are engaged chiefly in fishing and golfing. Second one, Bermuda is an attractive little island nestled in mid-ocean. Third one, visitors to Bermuda have no difficulty getting around the island or tourists visiting Bermuda are offered a variety of interesting activities. Which of these three happen to be true? Which one happens to be false? Think carefully.
Did they mention anything about Bermudans being fishers and golfers? Did it mention that the island was attractive and it is in the middle of the ocean? Did it mention that there are a variety of means to get around the island? Or, or did it mention that there are a variety of interesting activities? So by now you should have figured out what three things are true and that this one, the first one, is false. So Bermudans are not engaged chiefly in fishing and golfing. It never said that. It mentions that you, the tourist, can fish. It mentions that you, the tourist, can get golfing done. But it didn't say that the Bermudans are chiefly involved in these activities. All right, so let's continue. Which of the following techniques of persuasion does the writer use in this extract? Again, we did quite a number of them. So look at the list. Emphasis on Bermuda's tropical climate. Did we get a lot of information regarding that? Did we get a lot of information regarding appeal to the tourist's desire for comfort? Did you get information about specific examples of Bermuda's attractiveness? Or did you get comparison with other places to highlight Bermuda's attractiveness? So which of these did the writer use? There is one that he did not use at all. And I hope you can see it. There is one that was never ever there. So, have you found it yet? Yes, you have. Good. And I hope you got it right. So, specific examples of Bermuda's attractiveness were given. Quite a number of them, as a matter of fact. But we are not jealous because we know we have just as many, if not more. All right, next question. Which of the following aspects of Bermuda is emphasized? So, what was a lot of emphasis placed on? The cleanliness of it? the uniqueness of it, the remoteness of it, the spaciousness of it. Which of these did the writer put a lot of emphasis on, say a lot about? I'm sure you know which one it is. It's not cleanliness, not spaciousness. So it's a toss up between uniqueness and remoteness. Those two were there, but which one was more? It's uniqueness. A lot of details went into showing how it was different from everywhere else. Very good. All right. Our next question. Which of the following devices is used extensively in the advertisement? So which one of these did you see being used quite a lot? Did you see simile? Did you see metaphor? Did you see repetition? Did you see personification? There are two that were never in there. So those two should not come to your mind. Cross them off. Toss them into the sea of forgetfulness. But there are another two now that you need to decide. Were they used extensively? Extensively meaning quite a lot. You saw it happening a number of times. Hmm. Okay, ready with your answer? I hope so. And your answer should be repetition. Several things were repeated. Chief among them what? Bermuda. You saw the name coming over and over and over again. And there are certain phrases associated with it that were repeated as well. So I hope you caught on to that. All right, so now let's move on to our next piece, which is energy efficient tips. And I'm sure we can all use these. <laughs> all right, so tip number one, keep fixtures and bulbs clean. Dirt can absorb as much as 50% of light. Tip number two, turn off the lights when leaving the room, even if it's only for a few minutes. It's just a myth that it takes more energy to turn on a light than to leave it on. Tip number three, Use motion sensors for outdoor lights. They're a good security measure that doesn't waste energy. Number four, use lower wattage bulbs. Your lights may be brighter than you need. Number five, purchase lamps with dimmer switches as you can lower the setting when the light is required, when less light, sorry, is required. Number six, 
place floor or table lamps in a corner. This allows light to reflect from the walls, making the room brighter without turning on more lights. And the last tip, number seven, use fluorescent lights instead of incandescent lights. Compact fluorescent lights use up to 75% less energy than incandescent lights for the same amount of light and last up to 10 times longer. Now, these tips are good tips for those of us who would like to conserve on electricity and also conserve on the money in our pockets. All right, so let's look at the questions. The main purpose of this advertisement is to do what? So why did they give you all these tips? What is the main purpose of those seven tips that you're given? Were those tips given to you to sell light bulbs? <laughs> Were they given to you to promote lighting in the home? To encourage better energy use or to highlight energy use in the home? Why were you given these tips? I hope you would have figured it out that, of course, if you're given tips on how to conserve on energy, then that is what the, the main purpose is, to encourage better energy use. All right, let's look at our next question. Which of the following, and be very careful with this, which of the following is the meaning of the word absorb as used in the first tip? So remember now, it says, keep fixtures and bulbs clean. Dirt can absorb as much as 50% of light. What does the absorb mean in that context? So it doesn't necessarily mean what absorb would mean in another context. So does it mean waste? Does it mean store? Does it mean contain? Does it mean swallow? What does absorb mean? Keep fixtures and bulbs clean. Dirt can absorb as much as 50% of light. And the answer, waste. It wastes 50% of the light. All right, very good. Number three. How much energy do fluorescent lights use? And that was answered in the tips. It gave you a specific figure. So all you would have to do is just go back and look for it. So was that the same amount of light as other lights? 50% of what incandescent lights use? 75% more than other lights? Or 70% less than incandescent lights? Which one of those is the answer? There it is. I know you know it, so let's go to it. So fluorescent lights use 75% less than incandescent lights. Very good. Number four, the advertisement emphasizes that motion sensors are important because they are cheap, they waste energy indoors, they do not conserve energy, or they are efficient and, and provide security. Now look at the question, because even without looking at the answers, you can start eliminating the answers based on the question. The question says, the advertisement emphasizes that motion sensors are important. So would them being cheap make them important? Possibly. Would them wasting energy make them important? No. That wouldn't make any sense at all. Would, would the fact that they do not conserve energy make them important? Again, that one is irrational. So you already can eliminate B and C because they would not be deemed important based on these two because these would actually show that they are not important. So is it the fact that they are cheap or is it the fact that they are efficient and provide security? Were you given a cost? Did they tell you it costs less to get them? Or did they tell you that they are efficient and provide security? I know you know this. Yes, you do. And you are correct. They are efficient and provide security. Excellent. Next question. Which of the following is not stated in the advertisement? And again, the not is highlighted. So remember, you're looking for what was not there. So, low wattage uses less energy. Was that there? Lamps placed on the floor are better for energy efficiency. Was that there? 
Not all light bulbs are energy efficient. Was that there? Compact fluorescent lights are energy efficient. Was that there? One of these things was not mentioned. Be very careful because the way it is worded might lead you astray. So be very careful. Have you figured out which one of these wasn't said? Some of you are going to be surprised. This was not said. It didn't say that lamps placed on the floor are better for energy efficiency. Where did it say that you should place the lamps? In the corner, very good. So you place them in the corner because it said the light can reflect off the walls. It said floor lamps, but it didn't say put the lamp on the floor. All right, number six. The information in the advertisement would be most useful to whom? Hmm. So when you think of this list, to whom would this information be most valuable? To electricians, to contractors, to housewives, or to the light company? Who would benefit most from these tips that were given? Who would be the ones to make the most use of the tips? Should be a little easy to determine who stands to gain from these tips the most. It would be housewives because they are the ones who will have to find the money to spend on the electricity bill. So these tips will help to cut down on the amount of electricity used and therefore on the amount of money spent. Very good. Let's look at snack time. So snack time. Newly renovated snack time restaurant. 46 Queen Street, Queenstown. Too late to reach home for lunch? Rush in to snack time. Want a bite after the show? Drive in to snack time. We serve juicy hamburgers. Tasty hot dogs, refreshing milkshakes, delicious ice creams and sundaes. In the twinkling of an eye, at snack time. All right, we're ready now? Yes, we are. So, the words in bold print at the beginning of the advertisement are intended to do all of the following except what? And the words in bold print were... Newly renovated snack time restaurant, 46 Queen Street, Queenstown. All right, we have that. So look at the options now. So were they in bold for you to focus the reader on the type of service being advertised or to draw attention to the features of the business being advertised or to emphasize the benefits of having lunch at the location? Or was it to immediately draw the reader's attention to the information? So why are those words in bold? What is the purpose behind it? What was the intention? Why did they put those words in bold and not anything else? Ready for that? Yes, you know why. Naturally, they want to emphasize the benefits of having... No, I'm sorry. It's to immediately draw the reader's attention to the information. My bad. So... This is what it says there. All right, so for number two, in the advertisement, the phrase newly renovated in line one, remember that was the first thing on the page, newly renovated suggests what? So the surroundings look more attractive or the patrons will be more welcome or the quality of the food has improved or the service will be quicker than before. So if something is newly renovated, what is it saying about that thing? Newly renovated. Very clear answer should be coming to you right now. And that should be that the surroundings look more attractive. When you renovate something, you improve it. You improve the aesthetics. You make it look better. You fix it. All right. Next one. In the advertisement, in the twinkling of an eye, and that's in line 13, means the same as what? So think about that expression. You might have heard it before. In the twinkling of an eye. Does it mean very carefully? Does it mean 
under the stars, twinkling stars perhaps? Does it mean very quickly? Or does it mean with sparkling? Now, if you don't know the expression, this is going to cause you a bit of a problem. Because what would you determine that particular expression to mean in the twinkling of an eye? Because stars twinkle, and this is saying sparkling, so that would lead you astray. However, those of us who have heard it before know that it means something that happens very quickly. So in the twinkling of an eye, in that instant. All right, next question. According to the advertisement, which of the following does Snack Tang Restaurant claim to offer? So when you read the ad, what did Snack Time say they offer? So do they offer quick service at and reasonable prices? Do they offer prompt service and enjoyable snacks? Do they offer nutritious snacks and takeaway service? Or do they offer reasonable prices and pleasant surroundings? What did Snack Time say they give to their customers? Which of these four things? And of course, you have to be careful now because again, there is an answer there that might draw your eye away from the real answer. So, you're ready now? I think you are, of course. So they offer prompt service and enjoyable snacks. The temptation might have been to go with A, quick service and reasonable prices because the quick service was mentioned, but nowhere in the ad did they tell you anything about price? They never mentioned prices any at all. So we have to go with B, prompt service, same as quick service, and enjoyable snacks. They went into lovely details to tell you about the juicy burgers and the tasty hot dogs and all that good stuff. So our next question now. The advertisement is not, not designed to appeal to who? So based on the ad, who are they not trying to target? They were not trying to target, maybe, the diet conscious eater. They were not trying to target the cinema going crowd. Not trying to target the busy office worker. Not trying to target the fast food enthusiast. Who was it not trying to target? Remember now, you know, the ad is designed to pull in a particular type of person because an ad is designed to encourage you to participate in something. So who, based on the ad, was not part of the target audience any at all? You have an answer. I know you do. And this is it, the diet conscious eater. No healthy snacks were mentioned in the snack time ad. Everything there was something that a diet conscious eater should avoid. So we are clear that this is not the target audience. Which of the following literary devices is not used in the advertisement? Remember again, you're looking for what they did not employ. So did you see metaphor being used? Did you see hyperbole being used? Did you see repetition being used? Did you see personification? So let's go through that list now. Metaphor, remember, comparison of two unrelated things by saying one thing is the other. You ascribe certain characteristics. You don't use like or as. Hyperbole, gross exaggeration, so you blow it out of proportion. Repetition, of course, a word or a phrase or an idea over and over and over again. Personification, comparing something with human traits. So you put human traits to something else. Which one didn't you see happening? It should be very easy. No personification was in there, very good. So now we're going into another one, which is a special sales incentive. So as a special sales incentive, the developer is now offering for sale the first two completely ranch-style homes at this beautiful scenic development in Regent Park. The price is considerably below the official evaluation price. The houses, 
situated approximately 20,000 square feet of freehold land, features three fully carpeted bedrooms with built-in wardrobes, and the master includes a luxurious walk-in dressing area. A very large living and dining area opens out to a patio with panoramic views. The substantial kitchen is tiled and fitted with sturdy cupboards and is closely situated to a service quarters. A covered garage completes the units. These two units, offered at below evaluation price, represent one of the finest buys in today's real estate market, either as a beautiful home or as a revenue earning investment. For personal appointment to view, please call and you are given a number. All right, so look at that a little closely. Now let's look at the questions associated with it. So what is the special incentive offered? Be very careful with this one. So is it the option to purchase? Is it the type of offer advertised? Is it a unique, luxurious house at a reduced price? Or is it the exclusive privilege of living in a ranch-styled house? What is the special incentive? Look at the actual ad again. What is it that makes it a special incentive? All right, you should have an answer. So the luxurious and unique house that is being offered at a reduced price. That is the incentive, the fact that you're not paying full price for the house. All right. A substantial kitchen. So when they said that the kitchen is substantial, what do they really mean? A fully installed kitchen, maybe. A kitchen with adequate space, maybe. A strong and lasting kitchen, maybe a beautifully located and decorated kitchen so what about the kitchen makes it substantial think about the word think about the context within which the word is used substantial when you say something is substantial what meaning are you aiming at all right after all these prompts you know what the answer is so it is a kitchen that has adequate space. It's not a tiny little kitchenette. It's an actual kitchen, a spacious kitchen. Very good. Which of the following does the advertisement state? So one of these things actually occurs in the advertisement in one way or another. They actually say this. So did they say one cannot find a better buy than this offer? Did they say there are two options open to the buyer? Did they say the real estate market provides these sales rarely? Or did they say that the price will fluctuate? Which of these is said in the ad? Look carefully. What do they say? Something is there that you should know. All right. And your answer should be there are two options open to the buyer because it tells you that there are two houses that they're offering up for sale at this special low price. Very good. All right, let's look at the next question. To which of the following does the advertisement make the strongest appeal? So is it a desire for space? Is it success in life? Is it love of the exotic? Or is it great value at an affordable price? When you read the ad, what was the strongest thing that they were appealing to? Because if you look carefully at the ad, there are a number of things that are brought up, possibly all of these. But notice you're to focus on the strongest appeal. Which of these things did they emphasize more than the others? So did they talk about a lot of space? Did they give you a lot of dimensions, a lot of sizing? Did they tell you how successful you will become once you own this house? Or if you're successful, this house is a symbol of your success. Did they tell you a lot of things about nature and exotic things? Or did they just tell you about the great value and the affordable price? You know the answer. Yes, you know the answer. What is your answer? All right, let's see. 
great value at an affordable price. Very good. Next question. The houses advertised. What have they told you about the houses? Are they, is it, sorry, that they are part of a housing development? So did they mention anything about there being a housing scheme or a group of houses, anything like that? Or did they tell you that the houses are situated in a remote and rustic landscape? So did they tell you anything about where the houses were? The fact that they might have been secluded, the fact that they might have been surrounded by nature, anything of that sort. Did they tell you that the houses are part of a low cost housing scheme? So you have a development in one and you have a scheme in one. So right away, something should be bubbling in your mind. Or did they tell you that they are suburban townhouses? So did they tell you that they are in the heart of a city or in a suburb area? Something of that nature. What exactly were you told about the houses? So let's check back. Look carefully. Scan through quickly. What did it say regarding the houses? Remember, keep these options as you're looking. Part of a housing development situated in a rustic remote landscape, part of a low cost housing scheme, or suburban townhouses. All right, you know the answer by this. And of course, the houses were part of a housing development. Very good. All right, I hope you went through today and you actually benefited from all that we covered. So until tomorrow, Keep safe, study hard, students.